Hey guys, welcome back to Maker's Corner. In today's video, we'll be making a DIY modular camera rig. Now, the whole inspiration for this project was I figured I'm starting to do some YouTube. Camera rig might be a cool thing to have, or at least a useful thing to have. So, after doing a little bit of searching on principles, I didn't really find anything I liked, so I decided to design my own. Now, the modular aspect of this whole design is simply from the fact that you've got a couple of quarter 20 mounting points, the camera attachment spot is actually, I mean, you can use pretty much whatever you want as long as it's got like an Arca style uh, plate adapter. And then also the cold shoe mount is removable, which means you can design your own mounts for whatever device you need, whether it be a different kind of lights or a microphone or whatever, and you can just bolt it on there and go. So hope you guys enjoy this video. If you're ready, let's get started. All right, so after a quick little therapy session inside of Fusion 360, the whole design started to take shape and I was quite happy with it. It was a little big to begin with, so I shrunk everything down and once I did, it was perfect. Or at least close enough to perfect for me. And I was really happy with the design. So now we can take our files and send them over to our slicer to get them ready for printing. All right, so now we have all of our files open in our slicer of choice. First thing we need to do is come over to preview, wait for it to slice. This may take a minute on the handles because of the knurling, it's a pretty big file. Once it's complete, we need to take a look at the sectional view of the sliced file. So we're gonna come down all the way down to the bottom until we find the pocket area. Zoom in here. So we find the pocket area for our jam nut. We want to find the layer where it seals everything up and we want to go down just one single layer. We're going to come over here, right click and hit add pause. We're going to slice the file again. This time we're going to come up to the top pocket. And just as we did with the bottom, here's the very top where it starts to seal the nut in. We're just going to come down one single layer, right click and hit add pause again. And then once you slice your file for the final time, it'll have the pauses baked in. So when you send it off to your printer, it'll pause just before it seals up those cavities so that you can install the nuts, which I will show you guys a little bit later on. There's one other part we need to do this to. It's the top plate. Same exact thing here. We're just going to come down until we find the top of the cavity. We're going to come down one layer, right click, add pause, and then we can re-slice it. And just like we did with the handles, it'll start printing the part. And then once it gets to that pause, it'll stop giving you time to add the nuts before the print finishes up and seals everything up inside. All right, so we'll start off printing the handles. Once it gets to that first pause, we'll take our first jam nut, simply drop it into the pocket, and then hit continue to seal it up and continue the rest of the print. Once the print reaches the second pocket for the jam nuts, it's going to pause once again. And just like the first one, you'll carefully take your jam nut, slot it into position, and then hit continue to finish the print and seal everything up. Now we can move on to the bottom plate. I'm printing this on my Piopoli Magneto X, which if you watched my review video, you'd know that I had a bit of a 50-50 love-hate relationship with this thing. Piopoli's been doing a lot of work lately and I'm actually starting to like it a lot more. So expect an updated review video soon. Moving on to the top plate, just like the handles, this print will also pause at a certain point to allow us to install our two quarter 20 jam nuts in the pockets. The only difference this time around is I'm actually going to be adding just a little bit of super glue around the edges so that the jam nuts don't rattle around there. Unlike the handles, which have the tension from the bolts to keep them from moving around, these ones do not. Just make sure that you only put a little dab of super glue on the actual print itself and don't accidentally get any on your print bed. Trust me, you definitely don't want that to happen. The last part to print after all this is the cold shoe plate adapter. I didn't record it because due to the size and how fast it prints, they're 
frankly wouldn't be a whole lot to show. All right, so now that our printing's complete, we should have our base plate, our top plate, our cold shoe adapter, and of course, our handles. We're also gonna need some quarter 20 bolts, and of course, some heat set inserts and their corresponding screws. I'm gonna set all this, as hello, that was probably louder than it needed to be. I'm gonna set all this stuff aside for just a moment. As you can see, I got a little too excited and I installed the heat set inserts without turning the camera on. Fortunately, I do have this test piece, which I also put heat set inserts in already, but look at that. There's two holes there. So we can demonstrate how to install them in case you're one of the, I don't know, only four people in the world with a 3D printer who's never used heat set inserts before. Okay, so this is a relatively simple process. Normally there would be some countersinks here to kind of help guide everything in, but essentially you take your heat set insert and a soldering iron. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You could pick up a $5 one from Walmart or Amazon. You're just going to take the tip of your soldering iron and very gently insert it. And very gently push down. Let the heat do the work. Easy as that. Same thing with the other one. We'll go ahead and position it over the hole. We'll take our soldering iron and hello, the camera's tilting. Uh, <laughs> and just push down very, very gently. You don't want to put any pressure. Let the heat of the soldering iron do all the work for you. And just like that, our heat set inserts are now installed. All right, so the first step is going to be installing the cold shoe adapter onto the top plate. Easiest way I've found to do this, let's take our little M3 screws insert them into the plate itself and then just align it to the threaded inserts we just installed and screw them down Just like that, cold shoe plate adapter is installed. All right, so next we're gonna take our bottom plate. We're gonna take one of our quarter 20 bolts, insert it in. And the easiest way I found to do this was to just use my finger to hold the bolt while I took a handle and screwed it on. Once it was pretty close, I could come back with an Allen key and tighten it down. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, quarter 20 bolt in the hole, screw the handle on, and then tighten it down. As you can see, it's coming along pretty nicely so far. Now the easy part. Take the top plate, put it right on top and then drop our two quarter 20 bolts into the hole like so. There's. And then we can take our wrench and tighten everything down. Same thing with the other side. And tighten it down. just like that. All right, so now that our frame is fully assembled, the last thing we need to do is install our uh, phone tripod mounts. I'm using this newer SP02 tripod phone adapter, uh, re really any um, Arca style uh, tripod adapter should work just fine. So this just slides right into that slot there. 
and it should be perfectly aligned. Let's take a shorter quarter 20 bolt. Thread it in, oops, helps if I put the bolt in straight. There we go. Thread that in there and then just tighten it down. There we go. Now all that's left to do is take your phone, push up, slide it in, and release. For a little extra peace of mind, on this particular model, you can kind of push down a little bit and then flip this lever into the lock position. And now your phone is not going anywhere. And because we have this little cold shoe adapter, we can take a light, slot it in there, Tighten that down, and now you have a phone camera rig with a light. And of course, my silly camera is a little too close, wrong way. Let's raise this up a little bit here. One of these days I'll spring for proper camera gear. And there we go. Not bad. It's a pretty simple, easy project, and uh, I had a lot of fun making this. So if you enjoyed it, cool. Subscribe, thumbs up, don't forget to hit the little bell icon, it would be greatly appreciated. Alright, well there you have it guys. So, as usual, I will have the STL and the step files down in the description. That way if you want to make any changes to my design, you're more than welcome to do so. And those step files will really make it so much easier for you to just import it into whatever CAD software you want and make any and all changes you could possibly desire. Again, if you like this video, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you are notified next time I upload a video. I'm going to try and do these videos at least once a month. That was kind of my plan. Well, the original plan was once every two weeks. My work schedule just doesn't really allow for that right now. I am planning on getting there eventually, but I am going to commit to one video a month at the minimum. So with all that out of the way, as always, hope you guys are doing good and happy making.